Here we are, the 11th entry in the series and the final game on the PlayStation 2, rounding out this generation of Armored Core August. This is a pretty big milestone as we've got only three more games to go before we finish this series for the most part. But before we begin, I'd like to give a shout out to Halo Al for the lovely artwork once again and ask y'all to support the content however y'all can. Now let's dive into the story and development, shall we? This is the final game in the timeline established by Armored Core 3's reboot and released in 2005 or 2006 depending on the region. This game is a direct sequel to Armored Core Nexus, picking up where the story of that game ended, with much devastation wrought by the sheer arrogance of the companies in their attempts to control ancient technologies that they did not understand. Each company heavily devastated by the fallout of the unmanned machine's destruction, they were forced to band together as the Alliance, a government formed by all of the big three corporations, aka Crest, Kisaragi, and Mirage. Opposing them is Vertex, a force composed primarily of Ravens who survived the disaster at the end of Nexus, and being led by Jacko. They seek seemingly to overthrow Alliance in an attempt to set their own world order, and are willing to do anything to achieve their goals. You are one of the few unaligned Ravens who can choose to do missions that will benefit one side or the other, or even other independents. And you can make your choice for who you want to side with. With the world's conflict boiling up once again, you may very well be led into a mission that leaves your character as The Last Raven. This game is very robust, with a unique 24 hour format for the game, and each time you complete missions, you advance the clock, bringing about the impending Judgment Day one step closer. Last Raven is unique in the fact that there is a large amount of endings that can all be earned by whatever actions the player takes. This game is the conclusion of the second timeline, and as such goes all out with the story, customization, and mechanics. Very well, this could be the series' peak, at least for the PS2, if not the series as a whole. But let's cover that into the gameplay now, shall we? Armored Core Last Raven is a return to form after the last two weird experimental spin-offs of Ninebreaker and Formula Front, and as such, the gameplay is back and screaming for a fight. This game allows you to import your save from Ninebreaker or Nexus, with the caveat that all imported parts are marked as used, so they can't be sold for full price. Tuning is undone, so you have to redo the tuning, and all credits are lost in the transition. But that's a small price to pay to have all your mechs and their parts back. Customization is just as large as ever, with more parts being added, as well as the ability to import pretty much everything from Nexus. Which, if you went out of your way to earn the good stuff from both discs, you can have quite a nice arsenal to use. There's actually some new mechanics to gameplay added as well, such as the fact that specific parts of your body, such as your head or arms, can be entirely destroyed in a battle beyond repair, and as such, you'll have to buy a replacement piece if you want to continue using that particular piece of kit, or replace it with something else. This could be a good way to encourage you to try something else out. Another thing to mention about all the parts and equipment is that almost everything's been rebalanced by Nexus. Sometimes it's minor or major stat swaps, but for some weapons it's complete retoolings of how the parts work, such as the missile arm for example. They used to be able to lock up to four times on one enemy, but now they can only lock one at a time, which means their overall DPS has been drastically shrunk. Instead of 8 to 16 missiles fired at a time, you now can only fire 2 to 4 at a target. So be sure to plan your builds accordingly, and be sure to review any parts, so you're sure what you're walking into a mission with. Now speaking of missions, there is 70 missions spread out across several different ending paths. With the game having a 24 hour deadline, you'll only have time to clear around 20-ish missions before you reach an ending point. But fear not, because once you beat an ending, you unlock New Game Plus, which takes you back to the start of the game, so now you can choose to complete different missions and unlock a new story path. 
speaking of, there's also seven endings in the game, with the seventh being achievable once you've completed the other six endings. This coupled with the fact there is more potential missions to play compared to most other entries in the series, leads to a rather large amount of replay value, especially if you want to get all the loot. And the nice thing about New Game Plus is the fact you can endlessly replay any mission you've already beaten. So if you say missed a hidden part earlier because of an objective, or you just couldn't find it in time, well now you can try again for the equipment as much as you want. And there's certainly some cool new pieces of equipment in this game to find or earn, such as a left-handed Karasawa earned via the Arena Mode. Arena Mode is also back with 30 opponents for you to fight, plus more in New Game Plus, as you're allowed to refight all the ACs you killed in the Story Mode, earning new parts and resources. Overall, the gameplay is still damn solid, and like usual, the series can be hard as hell. But hey now, if you fail a mission that you cannot retry, the game is nice enough to let you either load back to before you tried the mission, or restart the game entirely. Though I'd only use that option if I made a really bad judgement call for my loadout and money. Emblem creation still the same as ever. Plenty of options to customize and enjoy, and you can import your emblems from previous games as well if that's what you want instead of making a new one. One other thing I like to point out is the amount of mech loadouts have been increased from 3 presets to 5. So now you can have even more options ready to go for different situations, such as my big blue tank mech I use to bust bosses and enemy AC fights, as well as arena mode, or great fox, my mech I use to punch through more standard missions as my heavyweight two-legged AC. I will say hover legs got hella nerfed in this version, with their AP and defense values taking a major hit to compensate for their superior speed and mobility over some of the other leg types. But luckily there's not too many missions that make hover legs a preferable option over two-legged or tank models. Now let's cover the presentation and performance, shall we? Continuing the cinematic stylings of Nexus, there's plenty more cutscenes and story in Last Raven than some of the earlier entries in the series. And while the graphics haven't changed much over the last few games, the presentation of this game goes hard. From the little things such as the garage view and the main menu highlighting whatever mech you currently have, selected, which you can actually control the pan and zoom of to look at the different parts of your mech, along with the darker soundtrack. The main menu credits theme is actually one of my favorites due to how somber it sounds in comparison to the standard electronic techno stylings of earlier games. Which don't get me wrong, those are still in and they still sound dope. But something about that opening track tells you this isn't going to be exactly the same as before. The tone shift of the soundtrack really sends home the fact that the situation has gotten more dire than ever. And no matter how this goes, most of the Ravens aren't going to make it to the end. Maybe even society as a whole. I will say it is annoying the fact that the track isn't part of the official soundtrack, with the version on the soundtrack being a very different sounding track. But that's not part of the game, and I can't hold it against the game. Now, performance-wise, I didn't notice any hiccups at all. The game ran damn smoothly, and it was a blast the whole way through. And that leads us to the conclusion of this review. Well, Last Raven certainly ends this generation with a bang. With quite a good game, there's a lot of story and mission variety, lots of characters, and the gameplay's definitely gotten smoother. It's a damn good point to end the timeline on. Honestly, the only thing that makes it hard to recommend is the fact that scalpers have jacked the price up like every other game in the series. But that should not deter you from experiencing this series in some sort of fashion. I really do like the large amount of replay value added by this game. This has definitely ended up as one of my absolute favorites in the series, and for good reason. It's going to be quite difficult to top the highs this series has reached, but I'm sure we'll find out. Armored Core Last Raven is a fantastic entry in the series, and with that, we've reached the conclusion of the PlayStation 2 era, 
with a total of eight games on the console. So you really got some bang for your buck in this generation. And most of these games are also available on the PSP if you're feeling really masochistic. Now before we go, I'd like to thank Halo Al once again for his lovely artwork. And thank all of y'all for watching this far into the series. And especially those members listed on the screen for y'all's constant support. Join me in the next video as we start the next iteration of the Armored Core franchise with Armored Core 4 for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. The first iteration is not solely on PlayStation hardware. This has been Core, and I'll see y'all then.